Hey folks, how are you doing today? How about doing great? That would be fantastic if you are. Hey, um, how many of you guys have ever been into, you know, the mystical world of this and that? The mystical world of, I don't know, maybe a Ouija board? Is that mystical world? But you know what? A lot of us have been into finding out what our horoscope is. We do tarot cards, all that kind of stuff. So today's guest is Susan Owens, and she is a numerology expert. So we're going to talk about numerology. That does not include money, but maybe it kind of does. So she has a book out that's called The Wisdom of Numerology, and you can find her at wisdomofnumerology.com. So if you're ready, let's get into finding out what this stuff is all about with numbers. Is it science? Is it religion? Let's do it. Welcome to Amazing People, Amazing Things, with your host, Chuck Tuck. So, Susan, okay. numbers. We're talking about numerology, right? right? So I want to get right into it and ask you, you know, what is it? Is it a religious practice or is it something that's science-based or is it something else? I consider it metaphysical. It's, uh, I align it a lot with um, astrology or uh, tarot or something. So the meta meta metaphysical sciences, if you will. Uh, I follow the Pythagoras uh, system where every number relates to uh, a letter or every letter relates to a number. Numerology runs on a nine-year cycle. Numbers go from one to nine. It's all about the single digit. Unless you're a master number in that, we don't, I'm sure we don't have time to get into that. But uh, for instance, A, J, and S are all related to the number one. So uh, A is the number, the first letter. 10 is the, or 10. J is the 10th letter. S is the 19th letter. And we reduce numbers down. So if I'm thinking about an S, 1 plus 9 is a 10 or a 1. So everything in 2 is a B and a K and a T and all, all the way through the alphabet. So that's how we get our numbers related to the, uh, the letters. And then from that, we use your birth certificate, the name on your birth certificate, to calculate your destiny and some other parts of your chart. Well, wow. that's because you came, that's who you no. came in to be. That's why we use the birth certificate number and your birth date. So easy. It, easy. It sounds like it's science. It definitely seems like you, you can't just get right into doing this to become a numerologist. And it, in, in fact, uh, you have a book out called the Wisdom of Numerology. I, I love the colors and everything on the book. This I'm really proud is. of this, uh, and and it's funny because I, I felt a responsibility to write this book. There's hundreds, thousands of numerology books, but there wasn't one that I never found one that I liked or like this one. I didn't find a book like this, and this book, the reason I wrote it is because of our, it's timely. Uh, it's all written in um, very clear, concise so if you want to look up, say, uh, number six, here's the number six life path. And it gives you a paragraph, two paragraphs on a number six life path, for instance, if that's what you want to say. So you don't, it's not a read front to back book. It's kind of a reference manual and a quick reference manual, okay. too, for that. And I won an award. I have to be, I'm pretty proud of that. I won a, a cover award, the, the um, Coalition of uh, Visionary Resources. So, yeah, I'm, yeah, it's... Congratulations. So it's, it's really been a fun thing uh, for me. And I am a writer. I'm a three. Our, we threes are creative. So, I'm, yep, I'm a writer. I'm not a singer. I'm a writer. Not a, I'm a dancer, <laughs> but I'm a writer first. And a communicator. We like to talk. <laughs> uh, oh, gosh. So it definitely sounds like with numerology, it, it's, I was going to ask a question. What's in it for me? What does it do for me? But it seems like it would help you put you on a path or to uh, guide you in some way? Would Absolutely. that be correct to say? Um, when we do your birth date, for instance, uh, that gives you your life path. Now, those are the numbers. Those are the, the, the skills that you came in with, that, that, that main number. And it, like I said, it just comes from your birth date. 
We don't have to calculate your birth time like you do in, in uh, astrology, but it's just your birth date. And that gives you, uh, like I said, I'm a three. So threes are the creatives. They're the talkers. They're the, uh, the communicators, really. Uh, they enjoy life. Three is a lucky number. I've had some pretty good luck in my life, pretty blessed with a lot of wonderful things and challenges, too. Don't get me wrong. But um, so and and we were expressive. So that's important. Uh, ones are the, the 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 leaders. They're the ones that come up with the ideas. But one's a singular mm. number, so mm. they kind of like things their way. They want to they want to lead the pack. They're not necessarily the ones that execute the the idea they come up with. They're usually the one that grabs people, pulls them together to create to manifest their idea. Twos are the wonderful ones. They're the great partners, the mediators, the diplomats. They uh, good caregivers. Threes again, the creatives. Fours are the workers. Boy, if you want a good accountant, make sure he's a four, because they like to do the same thing over and over and over. Uh, fives love change. They're great promoters. Sixes are the home and family people. They love. They're great relationship people. If you want to have a, a good relationship, marry a six. I always say that. Sevens, they're the ones that really get into the big life questions. Who am I? What am I doing here? Uh, they're the thinkers, the researchers, the computer programmers. They like doing that kind of thing. Sevens, that's what I said. Eights are money entrepreneurs, business people. Uh, they're the ones that really like to be organized and can take business to a new level. Nines, spiritual humanitarians unconditional loving, forgiving. So those are the basic numbers, but right, those are the, that's what you come in with. And like you said, uh, that gives you your skills. And then on your birth pat, birth um, certificate, that gives you what your destiny is, kind of the inner and outer you, what you show people. Uh, numbers that might come into that would, that in a, later in life. And then we have numbers that transit your chart, and that's a whole other story. Basically, that's it. Uh, uh, can you have multiple numbers that would be your number? And the only reason I ask that is at first uh, I'm thinking of celebrities or people that we know in general. And I'm going, oh, number one, that must be an Elon Musk. And then I thought, oh, wait a second. He sounds like a seven. Wait, he sounds like a, an eight. So he's a, can he be a one, seven, eight Absolutely. or something like that? And things, like I said, things translate, your numbers translate your chart. So things are a little bit different. Like, uh, for instance, um, if your birth date is today, for instance, what is it? August 26th. Well, okay. So August 26th. Oh, you're an 888. So you have an eight month, 26, two plus six is an eight. So that's an eight. And then you have 2024, which is an eight. So if you were born today, you got 888. Now those numbers shift like your first part of your life, first 30, 25, 30 years are are, have the influence of your birth month. The middle part of your years, 20, 25, 30, well, it's usually 30 years in the progressive years, that's your birth day. So that number influences your, your 30 years and your, most of your adult life. And then your wisdom years kick in about 60, somewhere in there, and that's ruled by your birth year. So numbers shift, that's one thing. And absolutely, you don't ever, ever have just one number in your chart i there's lots of there's mm. five core numbers so absolutely but i have to say the life path plays a big part because it's your birth date and we pull a lot of information off of that and your birth certificate date so or not wow. so yeah absolutely oh and taylor swift no kidding i did her chart love her and she's a seven and I told you earlier, sevens are the the recluse. They're the researchers. They're the ones that, they're the introverts, basically. But they also will like the limelight. And she has other numbers that say, yes, I'm a star. But that life path says, I've got to go back into my cave. I've got to retreat, do my research, do my work, and then come out again. And that's exactly what she does. So, yeah. Wow. Interesting, huh? Yes. Uh, so with numerology, uh, it's, can I be a numerologist or is Absolutely. there a lot of practice? 
Well, I mean, there's got to be a lot of practice that Absolutely. goes into it. Absolutely. I got st- the first book I read was 30 some years ago, and I couldn't get enough. I loved it. I loved it. And it really spoke to me. And if you want to get really off the charts, I know I've done it in another life. I've, I've taught numerology in another lifetime. So, uh, so I think that was probably why it was easy for me, but uh, easy to get into it. Felt just as natural as it could be because I've studied astrology and a lot of other, and tarot. I do a lot of that stuff, but numerology just really rang true to me. Now, and to answer your question, however, uh, I read, like I said, hundreds of books, thousands of charts. I've read lots and lots of charts, and that's really helps me learn how to understand the numbers. The, the, the more information you get, the, the, the more diverse your response is to numerology, let me say it that way. And so, yes, and I have a training video I'm working, it's going to be coming out this fall. Uh, I have the book. And so there, there, are other, there are programs, if you want to learn how to do that, I'm going to start classes in the fall to teach. So there's just a lot of opportunity. And numerology is kind of hitting the mainstream finally. And that's my goal, is to get it out there in the mainstream. Everybody knows what their sun sign is, right? You know, But people don't necessarily know what their life path is. Well, you just add your briefing together. Yeah. Okay, now okay. I'm in the know. <laughs> <laughs> what I wanted to know is, is numerology something new or is it, has it been around for a, a long, long time? I'm talking centuries and ancient centuries. Ancient wisdom. Been. It's ancient wisdom. And uh, I think we had, an, I've, I've seen things, I've read things where people believe that it, it was the first language because we had numbers to communicate through, uh, not necessarily counting, but numbers and the symbols so and sacred geometry so i i i believe it's ancient and uh there's been lots of different mm, how do i say this uh threads that have come from that uh there's lots of different styles in numerology like i said i follow pythagoras so uh, and i don't know a lot about those because i found this one and i said this is it this is what i want to know and and for me and then um yeah so definitely, like astrology too, there's lots of different forms of that as well. Well, it definitely sounds like, like you said, um, your book is a guide book uh, and, and it lays it everything out uh, as far as numbers go and what the numbers mean, how to, how to translate the numbers to letters or letters to numbers. I, I'm going to have to take a look at this thing because now you've got me really interested in this. And I know many people I've got to secretly have an interest because and the reason I say that is growing up as a kid, you're always um, either seeking something out or you have an open mind, whether it be I, I can't think of one person who hasn't had a curiosity about tarot cards and sat down and, you know, hey, read this or can you read my palm type of thing? And I, I look at this as all falling into that same uh, mm-hmm. arena. I agree. Completely. And uh, I am also, I've got so much going on, but I'm also writing a book for teenagers. It's uh, Wisdom and Numerology for Teens. And, and I, because I, when I was growing up, I studied astrology. You know, I always looked at my horoscope in the paper every day. And I flashed back on that. And it was whether the sun was, uh, it was basically a happy face then before happy face. But it was a happy face. And sometimes the happy face would be sad. And that would be my day. That would, well, you're not going to have a good day. It's like, how horrible is that? But anyway, so I think, uh, I, I remember wanting direction, wanting to know about myself growing up. And, and there's not really a teen book for numerology. And if I'd known early on that I had a, a gift of writing or that I had, uh, oh, this might happen in your lifetime or uh, just some background, some foundational information about myself as a, as a person, as a human, I think it would have made mm-hmm. a big difference because I numerology pretty much rules my life uh, right now. Uh, well, it has for years, and, and rules. Mm-hmm, that's not. That's a little stronger. Uh, I f- I know the energy of the numbers, and I work with them. Chuck, this is the year that I've launched my online business. I've been doing numerology for years, but I find I put it all together. I've I've got a website. I've I'm doing all kinds of things. Because this is an eight year, 2024 is an eight year. And I said earlier, business, management, organization, entrepreneurship, 
that's the year. So I look at the energy of the number and I say, this is the year I want to do this. This would be a good year. And last year I wrote an, uh, a lot of my travel stories that's on another website. But anyway, okay. so that's that's how I would look at numerology and how it kind it uh, quote unquote runs my life, if you will. I, I, I just know what the energy is and I, and I work with it. And that's basically what it is. The other thing I was I meant to tell you, I have people come to me, like I said, when I was a teenager, I wanted to know all this, but I have people come to me in, their, in different times of their life. For instance, uh, maybe they're divorced, maybe they're get, going through, they're finding themselves newly single, oh my gosh, now what do I do? Or they're uh, going through something, they've changed jobs, or they're looking for a new career, or something, a new relationship, something, there's a change in their life. Or they're sober, you know, I mean, who knows, right? Some change in their life and they're feeling a little mm, like the ground other than might be gravel or just a little unstable and they need a foundation. And I, it's like, they'll come to me and I'll say, oh, okay, this is what's going on in your life right now. This is where your strengths are. Oh, here's some challenges coming up. I can see where you might have some challenges. And then, and that, and knowing that, having kind of a heads up, if you will, gives them a little bit more, uh, ooh, courage is the word that comes up, but a little more understanding about what's going on in their life. And uh, so that, so I get a lot of people that come to me in times of their lives where, hmm, things are shifting, what do I do now, kind of, you know. You know, for folks out there, the audience, if you're thinking, ah, this is just hocus pocus, mumbo jumbo, hey, you know, Susan, you, 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 pretty much said it what we we're just talking about earlier is i can't think of one person who hasn't dabbled in the curiosity of this because like you said oh when i was growing up i would i would read the uh, my horoscope well who hasn't read their horoscope whether you believed in it or not you read it and you thought ooh is that how my day is going to go so here you go numerology could help you set yourself on a, a life path too but like you said it, it can mm -hmm. change but it, it it guides you. Um you know, it's um I, I I'm i I'm just thinking how else can numbers help me in my life? Is there anything else that uh numbers can well, do for okay. me? Okay, yeah, I owe oh, lots. So um there's a there's a a nine year cycle that we go through. Now, uh, oh. you know what? Let's talk about that. I don't know if I ever gave you that information. What's your birth month and your birth day? I don't need your birth year. Birth month and birth day. February and 25. Also, I want to throw this out. Folks, uh, you can go to her website, which is the same name as her book, wisdomofnumerology.com. So be sure to go there. And I think you've got some... Uh, a newsletter, maybe? Do. Um, Thank you. Uh, yeah. I do, and it's a freebie. You just sign up, and I send you every month uh, what's going on in that month for you based on your personal year, which is just what we're going to talk about. Perfect timing. All right. Time. right. So uh, numerology <laughs> runs on a nine-year cycle. And what's interesting, uh, everyone, this is a universal year. 2024 is an eight, so it's a universal year. We all have that. Now, when I add your numbers together, you said February 25th, that adds up to a nine. So we add nine plus eight, that gives us 17, right? One plus seven mm -hmm. is an eight. So your personal year is an eight as well, okay? So here's a, here's a secret. When your first two numbers add up to a nine, it's always gonna be the same as the personal year. That probably threw everybody. Add your birth month and your birth date to the current year, gives you your personal year. Now, uh, this year, as I said, this is a year for you to be in business. I'm guessing this has been a really busy year for you in uh, whether you whether it's your, uh, your show here or whatever part of your life, but uh, there probably have been changes, expansive, expansive changes. Now, that's usually what an eight year is about. Things are really going to open up in the fall. Uh, we're going into September right now. So in an eight year, September is also an eight month. Now that's the information I'll give you if you sign up on the website. 
But so we have this eight energy that says you're going to organize, you're going to expand your business. It's going to be money. I <laughs> money comes and goes in a big in big way in an eight year. I don't know about you, but a lot's been going out the door so for me. So I'm <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm waiting Me for it too. to come it's back. Like, okay, now wait a minute. We're going to balance this. And eight's all about balance. Absolutely. I have a friend that's an eight, and, and her year is, she works all the time, just really hard. And so her year has really been about balance. Take some time off. Really, you know, so it's different, right? But strictly an eight uh, balance year. Eight's like the quintessential balance number. Okay. So if you're in a one year, this is cool. New beginnings. This is the year that you you write down, you plant seeds for what you want to create the next nine years. Okay. So how do you see yourself in nine years? What, what is life going to be for you in nine years now? And I, and this is how I, this is what I tell people. And this is for anything you want to manifest. You got three columns. The first column is your must haves. So must have good health, right? This is what I must have. I want good health. The second column, and whatever, I mean, and, and list a lot of things, not just good health. What do you, what do you, what are your must-haves? And then the second column is, oh, would be nice if. Well, okay, would be nice if I lost a couple pounds, you know, whatever. Or what, and all your what ifs are would be nice ifs. So then the third column, this is this is your wildest dreams column. This is in your wildest dreams. What do you want to manifest in the next nine years? and absolutely do not censor yourself. So I'm a writer. When I write, I, I just let it come out. I just write and write and write. If you're not a writer, just write it anyway. Write down whatever you hear, you hear come through. And you, as foolish as it absolutely. is, write it down, right? Because the universe is giving you things, and, they, and the universe is unlimited, right? Your mind is limited. So when you censor yourself, you're censoring the wisdom in the universe coming through. So just write down whatever you, whatever comes through, and you'll be amazed at the end of those nine years. So then, and one years are one one years are usually really busy, big, lots of manifestations because you got 12 months of this coming up with these numbers. Then, in a two year, if you if you add your first birth month birthday to the current year and you come up with a two, keep adding it together till you get one digit. If it's a two, this means it's a little slower year. You get a reprieve. You're not manifesting. You're not writing down what you want to manifest. All the stuff may come through. What you're doing is you're nurturing those seeds you planted the year before. It's a year of balance. It's a year of kind of taking it easy. In that one year, it's all about you, single digit. One year, all about you. In a two year, you, partnerships. And you might even defer to people. What do, we, what do you think I need to do? Or what, you know, get some advice. So that's your two year. A lot of people move uh, residences in a two year. I, that, yeah, it doesn't make sense to me, but that's what happens. I don't know. Happens in a two year a lot. But really think about being a diplomat intuitive. It's a big intuitive year. So you kind of just, you, you kind of sit back and receive. In the one year you're putting out there. In the two year you're more introverted and you're receiving. Three years, a year to have a good time, truly. Enjoy life. Social calendar might be full. Uh, get your expressions out there. Know your, what's going on emotionally and be able to communicate that. Again, three years about three is about communication. Enjoy yourself, really. Watch your, ex, your ex, mm, extravagance. But truly, it might be a money year. Money comes to threes. So... Enjoy yourself because in a four year, you're going to keep your nose to the grindstone and you're going to work because that's the year to set up a new foundation. And the reason you do it is because of the five year. But this four year, you work hard. You follow the rules. You don't take risks. You just keep your, your head down. And the stronger you are in your foundation, your diligence, your discipline, your structure, use all those words that I can't stand, really. It's a four years of challenge for a three, let me tell you. But if you keep your, if you work on it and you have a good solid foundation, the five year is expansive. It's freedom seeking. Liberty comes to those five years. It's a year to promote, to travel, to experience life fully. Five is all about all five senses and really enjoying life. Uh, six years, you bring it back in home, 
family. Uh, your domestic life is important in a six year. Family will probably need you more in that six year, either it's your parents or your kids, or you just want to be home more in a six year. It's all about relationships. It's the, we call it mm, the marriage and family year. Um, either you get a marriage, you get married, or you get a divorce. And really, that's extreme, right? But somewhere along that, right? Yes. Somewhere along that spectrum, you either redo yeah. your vows or you choose something else. But somewhere along, it, relationships are in the spotlight in the six year. Seven year, we talked about sevens, but seven year is your year to retreat again and go inward and, and ask the questions Am I on the right path? Is this really who I am? What, what's my life purpose? And you might find things realign or take a, take a different, they pivot or something else happens. But it really is your year to go inward and, and connect. Uh, again, intuition is, is heightened a little bit in the seven year. Eight year, we talked about business management. Mm -hmm. The nine year cycle, the end of the nine year cycle is a nine. Now this is completion endings things and again think about this in 2025 this is next year things are going to resolve things things end whether you want them to or not sometimes people leave in a nine year it, maybe you're not ready for them but they do things things you don't no longer need are going to end in a nine year it's also the year to reap the rewards of your hard work for the previous nine years so uh travel can happen uh it's a year for letting go, forgiveness, being a humanitarian, unconditional love. And think about that as 2025, because 2026, we're going to get into a brand new one year and we get to start it all over again. So that's universally, again, it's a nine year next year. So there will be a lot of things coming to resolution and completion. So there's the nine year cycle. And that, yeah, that kind of runs my life because I'm familiar with the numbers. Yeah. Well, again, uh, folks, you can go to wisdomofnumerology.com. And like Susan said, you can sign up for a free newsletter. There's so much happening here. And again, whether, whether you're into this or not, think about when you were a kid or maybe even now, maybe you secretly still look at your, um, you know, your astrological sign and you, you, you do that. Treat this kind of the same way. And then who knows, you may find yourself going, hey, those numbers really do mean something and really start to open yourself up to following and uh, allowing yourself the permission to uh, maybe be guided a little bit on this. So uh, this has been really, really, I'm going to say, the word cool this has been really cool this is really great as corny as it sounds it brought back the childhood in me of curiosity to find out well what, i wonder what my numbers are so i'm sure that's happening to a lot of you out there the audience so check it out there's no better way than going to the website and checking I, it out sign up for that well, newsletter that and right? i do readings i'll do i'll do a full chart reading which gives you all kinds of information about your core numbers your birthdays and it tells you that what's going on in your life up until the age of 99 so from 0 to 99 every year there's could be a new number in your chart it's different i once you look at it so wow. yeah and i'll tell you there's a number in my chart in everyone's chart that tells you uh, it's a challenging number. It's a, it's a, oh, I want to say a dark night of the soul. It, life lesson is coming. And when this number showed up on my chart, I was in a car wreck, life-threatening car wreck. Another time it showed up and I lost a parent. Another time it showed up, it was COVID for me. So it was a really different, uh, it tells you a lot as well as, oh my gosh, this is, this is an expansive time and it might be a, a, a cycle of an expansive time. So there's a lot of information that we get from your core numbers as well as, like I said, numbers that transit your chart. And uh, yeah, it tells you a lot about what your life is about in this lifetime. That's what it is, life stuff. Wow. Yeah. Well, Susan, Susan Owens, thank you very much. This has been, this has been fantastic. 
Rick, and I've had a great time. It's so fun talking to you, especially loving, loving someone that's got the curiosity energized. I love it.